It's been a couple of weeks since I've gotten to work on my Kibler rifle kit here and really I have nothing left to do for mechanical assembly other than to put the sights in. The uh, question whether I should even bother to put them in now because I need to, I'm going to take them back out so I can draw file the barrel so I'll, I'll end up uh, doing some draw filing to take the barrel finish down to where I want it and the sights will be in the way so I'll take them out for that. And I'll take them out for finishing the barrel. Um, I don't know if I'm going to brown it or what, how I'm going to finish it yet. Uh, but I'm also losing a little bit of steam on the project and have a few other things going on that um, are going to distract me for a while. So I thought, well, I'll go ahead and finish the assembly. And then I can hang this thing up and uh, come back to it in a few weeks when um, um, the mood strikes me to take it all apart and start working on the metal finish. I really didn't do anything off camera here other than this is the, the rear sight and uh, there was a little bit of a gate or a sprue, I don't really know what the right term is, on the bottom here. So a few licks with a file, it really didn't take much to uh, to end up taking that, that off. Uh, you can see I didn't even clean the bottom surface up completely, it's still a little bit uneven, but uh, really that's not going to matter. Uh, at that point it wouldn't fit into the dovetail, I couldn't get it started. Um, I very carefully took maybe half a dozen licks uh, with a file along this front bevel and I wanted to clean up the bevel but I was also trying to create a, just a little bit of a lead, a little bit of a narrower end so it would go into the dovetail. Like I say it was maybe half a dozen licks, licks and that got me to where it may be too loose. Um, the, the site actually uh, goes in over halfway. Uh, I'm going to tap it in place with a brass rod but I figure if it is a little bit too loose um, I can come back later and just ping the dovetail in just a little bit and um, tighten that up. But uh, all I'm going to do here is use a brass rod, just a piece I happen to have a lot floating around. Yeah, that's, that's not any too tight. Um, I suspect I'll have to tighten that up a little bit when I go to start firing the rifle. But um, I don't know how to put this in, but what I'm assuming is when I get down to actually finishing the rifle, I'll make some careful measurements of the width of the flat of the barrel or the width across these two flats. And I'll use a set of calipers or, or some other way to measure this and put the center of the bead dead center in the rear of the barrel. Um, and then um, any, any adjustment I need to make at the range, I'll be able to do by drifting this left or right a little bit. So really that's all there is to the rear sight. To get ready to put the front sight in, I pretty much did the same thing. Um, there really wasn't much cleanup on the bottom. You can still see it's it's still pretty much as cast. Um, I came in with a, a small triangular file with the one safe edge and um, put the safe edge up against the bottom of the sight and, and just a few strokes on each side to to kind of clean up the, the bevel here a little bit, trying to maintain the angle of the, the dovetail. And uh, initially I couldn't get it to go in uh, to the dovetail at all. It was, it was pretty tight. And much like the back sight, uh, just a very, very small amount of creating a lead. I got it to where it goes in uh, from one side about halfway. Um, I can't get it to go in from this side at all yet. Of course, I didn't create any lead back here. It makes sense. Now, the front sight as it's cast is way wider than it needs to be. And I quite, haven't quite figured out how I'm going to handle the finishing here. I'd love for the sight to be beveled to match the flats when the rifle's all finished. Um, but I'm also going to want the barrel to be finished. I'm not going to leave it in the white, even though apparently that would be historically correct. I'm going to probably brown it or at least do a French gray kind of finish on it. Uh, and I also probably want some ability to drift the front sight forward and backward a little bit. So I probably can't have the dream of having it completely flush. Um, if I center the, the sight after the rifle's completely built and I come back and file it flush, I'll mess up the finish. So anyway, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do all that yet. And there's, there's an approach there, I'm sure. But I know this is too wide. And I've kind of eyeballed some uh, witness marks into the, the brass here. I'm going to go outside in the outside shop and use my belt grinder to take 90% of that material off. 
Um, I'll do that off camera and then uh, come back and we'll drift the side into place. So it only took about 30 seconds to take off most of that material with the uh, uh, belt grinder. If you don't have the luxury of having a 2x72 grinder in your garage, don't worry about it. Um, I think Kibler, if I remember right, in his videos just snips this off with a pair of side cuts and files it, files it a little bit clean. So um, I think this is ready to go in. Um, I noticed that the, the bottom side, you, know, you can see the sights or run flush uh, up against the top of the barrel. I think those are going to rub a little bit as I put this in. Um, I think that's a good thing and I just assume there would be some interference there. But I haven't actually drifted this all the way on yet so we'll see what happens. Um, the other thing that uh, probably will happen is when I take this back out and I uh, um, put it in for the final time Take care of a little bit of a bump I see there. I'm going to put it in for final time. I'll probably try to file the, the profile of the site a little bit cleaner, a little bit so there's little crisper corners on it. Um, I used to do some open site competition shooting in a totally different discipline, and uh, the crudeness of these sites uh, kind of gives me the willies, but um, then again, it's a 18th century rifle design, so I probably won't go crazy there. So well, anyway, uh, let's see if we can drift this thing in. Um, like I say, I think the back side's over the edge of the barrel a little bit. The, the front edge of this site might be rubbing against the top of the barrel. So. Oh. Oh, got to go over the barrel, so... Well, I can see I uh, eyeballed my side a little bit wrong. That's pretty well centered, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a relief here. Um, that's actually okay. That's probably how I should leave it anyway. When it comes time to finish up the, the rifle, we'll uh, figure out how to dress that out. So. That was quite a bit tighter than the rear sight, um, but like I say, if uh, I decide that that's too loose, I could come in here and peen the dovetails down, or I could even come in with a punch and peen a couple of spots down there, and that would certainly hold that mechanically. So that's the end of putting the sights in, and actually the mechanical or the mechanical assembly of the rifle is done. I uh, still need to cut the ramrod off, and my pins are all sticking out way too far because I don't need to pull them back out. Uh, but you could take that rifle out and shoot it right now. Well, I'll try to do a, a pan along the rifle here to show the overall initial assembly. So you can see the buttstock. Uh, I'm actually pretty pleased with how tight the buttstock fits in. Um, manually focusing here. And we've got the patch box. Clicks into place. Uh, it's not too terribly loose, but it's got a little bit of slop as per the recommendations. Come along. I'm pretty excited to see how all this curl finishes out. Um, trigger guard. It's as cast. I cleaned up the, um, the few areas of um, sprues and gates and things that needed to, but I'll have to just for the assembly, but I'll have to do a fair amount of filing and sanding to get that all the way we want it. Lock fitment is really nice. Um, there's this little spot here where uh, I decided to drill through the stock and it's kind of half round into the lock so that this pin that holds the uh, trigger guard in isn't completely blind. I don't know if that's correct or period correct or normal to do, but it's what I decided to do there. Um, the lock uh, as finished as cast is actually pretty nice. I don't know if I'm going to try to polish that out the more I think about it, the more I'm tempted to maybe sand out some of the lines that were in the waxes and then just be blasted. Uh, come along the stock, you can see a lot, of, a lot of nice curl. Rear sight that we just put in. Here's the entry pipe for the ramrod. As I understand, that's uh, one of the hardest parts about most of these rifles. Um, 
literally just dropped in place with this kit. So, uh, pan it along. More pins. We've got a ramrod pipe. Plenty of curl. This was the extra fancy maple stock option. And we come up to the nose cap, which, you know, again, I'm expecting to do a fair amount of filing there. So, so flipping the rifle over, uh, we've got the other side of the nose cap, um, front sight, again, fair amount of filing to do just to clean the finish up, but no major dimensional changes. Front rain wrap pipe. Scanning along, still see a fair amount of curl on this side of the stock. Second pipe. Kind of panning along. Here's the entry pipe. Um, which again, saw the video on that. Just sort of surprised, dropped right in place. Up to the rear sight. Here we are at the side plate. Uh, side plate again just dropped in place. That was kind of as expected in this case. Um, Kibler talks about the fact that that's all CNC machined and shouldn't require much fitting. I think the side plate is just crying for some engraving. It's not high on my list of skill sets, so I'm hoping to um, maybe take some classes in both engraving and carving uh, to embellish this rifle a little bit before I do the final finish work. We'll see what happens. Uh, the other side of the trigger guard, you know, again, fair amount of sanding and cleaning up to do there, but nothing major. Uh, buttstock, again, hopefully maybe do some carving. You can see the other side of the butt plate. Nice tight fit, no gaps. So there we are. There's our, our rifle project as a whole. Um, I've been surprised. People have been uh, watching these videos. Um, it kind of blows me away, actually, that that many people have decided to watch these videos. Um, I will try to do some some work showing how the how the filing and the of the metal parts goes and the scraping and sanding of the stock. Um, I'll definitely show some uh, some of the progress when I do the the wood finishing the. Iron nitride or the aqua fortis, whatever you want to call it, finish of the stock. I've done a little of that work. Um, I know that seems to be a mystery to people, so maybe I can help out there. And uh, at some point, I'll shoot this thing and I'll take some videos of that as well. But uh, for now, that's probably going to be it. I uh, will see you guys all later.